Disney's Aladdin is a fantastic film. It's got catchy songs, has the late great Robin Williams, and a parrot with the voice of Gilbert Godfrey. What more could you possibly want from a cartoon film? But just because a movie is great doesn't mean the tie-in game is going to be equally good. An adventure like Aladdin can actually lend itself to a fun platforming romp, which is something I discovered when I originally played the SNES version of Aladdin on the old version of the show. And I discovered it again when I completed the Genesis version a few years later. So we'll find out if third time's the charm when I recomplete Disney's Aladdin for the SNES. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Completionist New Game Plus, a show where I take another look at the first 120 games in the original Completionist lineup. More on that in the description box down below, but more importantly guys, Disney is making a weird live action Aladdin movie, and I'm not sure how I feel about it, so I thought, hey, now is the perfect time to play, once again, Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo with Dodger. Problem is that Dodger is nowhere to be found. I have no idea where she is. I don't know why she's not here. I've had a call time oh, early. It's not I going on. This it's very frustrating. This is the same bit. We're doing the same bit again. You're doing the same bit again where you can't see me. For the third time. You, I, yeah. I can't, I get, there's, my, I, there's a baby. Like you can't pretend oh. I haven't been here when there's a, a literal agent of chaos in the same room as us. You have a baby now? Sam's not here, so I'm babysitting king. You gave Ted your child? Yeah, she won't live long. That was a mistake. Let's talk about Aladdin. So we've covered both versions of Aladdin on the show now, but the SNES version was played back in the earlier days of The Completionist. And while we've also played the one on the Genesis, they're totally different games, which makes this one worth going back to. Even if this is the one of the two versions where you don't get to use a sword, everything's better with swords. Back when Disney's Aladdin came out in 1992, they had a deal with Capcom to develop their properties into games for the Super Nintendo. But while Capcom was handling the SNES side of things, Virgin Games was making their their own Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. We talked a lot of trash about the Genesis version when we first completed Capcom's Aladdin, but when we went back and played it, it was honestly pretty good. Like Gerard said, there's a sword, I mean. But the SNES version is definitely the one that I have more nostalgia for, and probably the better game. I haven't streamed it again not too long ago. If you're a big Disney buff, then it's actually kind of cool to know you've got two options when it comes to getting your Aladdin fix in video game form. And honestly, you can just play them both since they're each super quick and bite size. To complete the SNES version, again, excuse me, to complete the SNES version again, I'm gonna have to play through the game seven stages, only three of which have bosses for me to beat. And on top of that, there are the 10 red gems to pick up in each level, and some treasure chests with golden scarabs to help you get bonuses, I mean, none of which are a sword, unfortunately. No, oh, don't remind me. But that's pretty much it. It should take somewhere around an hour, unless I miss a gem and have to go back and get it. But Dodger and I are old pros of this Aladdin business now, so I'm not too scared at all. How can I be scared when I have a super dope sword? No, Gerard, that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, I know. Aladdin for the Super Nintendo is still a fun Capcom platformer, even if its connections to the movie sometimes feel tenuous at best. But games are a separate medium, and I'm happy to trade some of the Genesis version's fidelity to the source material for better gameplay. Aladdin is the story of a so-called street rat named Aladdin, who is tasked by the king's advisor Jafar into- Wait, wait, wait. Are we really going to summarize Aladdin a third time? I know I wouldn't let you skip over the summary last time, but I mean, we were younger then. We had all the time in the world. The plot of the game is the plot of the movie. A boy and his monkey steal a lamp and then hijinks ensue. And in the case of this game, those hijinks mostly entail jumping onto, off of, and over things. Well, you know, avoiding the occasional enemy. Unlike the Genesis version, the enemies are far and few between after the first level. And it's kind of weird to note, but the enemies that go on from there don't even 
even belong in this game. Do you guys remember the great enemy in the Aladdin film that's just the crow that's stuck in the vase? Yeah. Me neither, because that's the only enemy in this game. Every single stage has a variant of a crow's feet sticking at the bottom of a vase. My favorite Aladdin character of all time. If he's not in the remake, I'm out. When it comes to the Super Nintendo version, it has a larger focus on the platforming elements. And of course, who can forget the two flying carpet sequences, which have you either escaping from the Cave of Wonders or soaring through the clouds of Agrabah collecting gems. One mechanic in this game that I really appreciate, which goes a long way towards making up for the lack of a sword, is the parachute. The jumping in this game feels weird, with an intense floatiness followed by a plummet back to the earth. But with the use of a parachute, which is definitely not underwear that Aladdin stole off of a clothesline, with the use of a totally normal parachute, Aladdin can get to distant platforms, collect hard to reach gems, and control the speed of his descent a little bit more. This mechanic is probably one of my favorite things about the game, and the thing I missed most when we played the other version. The other major tool in Aladdin's bag of tricks is the ability to throw apples at enemies to stun them. This is a mechanic shared across both versions of the game because yeah, throwing apples at people's faces is a very Aladdin thing to do. The same goes for running around on rooftops, which this game also has a fair amount of. And it's good that it captures those Aladdin vibes through the gameplay because it otherwise feels a little more isolated from the movie than the Genesis version does. It's true. They both have levels that will make you say, I don't remember that being from the movie, but the Genesis version nails the animation style more than this one does, and the music in that one has the benefit of using more licensed tracks. Like, the player character in this game looked mostly like Aladdin, but just a little bit off. He's like a knockoff Aladdin, spelled with only one D in his name, and was meant to confuse grandparents doing Christmas shopping in 1993. The same goes for the music, though, which is such an iconic part of the movie. While there are a couple of levels with licensed tracks, there are also a few with songs that sound kind of like songs from Aladdin, but not. I expect to be serenaded by Robin Williams for the duration of this game, basically, or really every game. I miss that guy. And while the SNES version of Aladdin maybe doesn't sound or look quite as faithful as the Genesis version of the game, it makes up for it with tighter, more entertaining gameplay. It's Capcom, you know, those folks know how to make a platformer. Or new. So while this Aladdin isn't quite as Aladdin-y of an Aladdin as the other Aladdin, it's still the better game, which goes a long way. It feels a little more inventive than the other version too, with the spinnable genie wheel for collecting bonuses and a platform-focused gameplay that doesn't just rely on hitting dudes in the face with a sword. Not that I have a problem with hitting dudes in the face with a sword, obviously. It would rule out a lot of video games if I did. But jumping on enemies' heads is just a classic, and there's plenty of that in this game. Like in the last boss fight against Jafar in his snake form, which is super fun, way better than the version of it in the other game, and it made me wish that this game had more boss battles like it. Jumping over flames to bop a big ol' snake on the head just feels right. But as it stands, there are only bosses at the end of three out of the game's seven levels. It's better than nothing, and at least the boss battles that we do get are super cool. And apart from teaching Jafar a lesson and trespassing on rooftops, the last thing to be done in Aladdin is to make sure we get all of the golden scarabs and red gems. Some of them are hidden off the beaten path, but none of them are impossible to find. When Brooke streamed the game, we did miss a couple, but the game is so quick, it wasn't even that much of a pain to run through again to grab them all. And just like that, we completed the Super Nintendo version of Aladdin for the second time. It wasn't so bad, was it, Dodger? No, it's just a quick game, and I still think that it's super fun. It scratches that nostalgia itch while providing a solid, charming platformer from the minds of Capcom. And I'm actually pretty glad that we did another episode about it, Gerard. Thanks, it's always great to have you here and, wait, Oh, whoa, wait, well, what is that? Make way for the baby. Say hey to the baby. Hey, look, here she comes. What a precious angel. Can't help but take pics from every angle by far. She is more than just a normal child. Make way, here she comes, playing games, having fun. Would you just look at that smile? Hip, hip, hooray, it's time to play with a baby. I am so, so sorry. This weird man, it, like, hearing it's... him saying it. Where's my baby exactly, Ted? Uh. It just... Hey, yo. I don't find this funny. How did you do that? Who 
taught you this? Can I get a rematch at least? The only real thing to unlock in the Super Nintendo version of Aladdin is the extra hearts and lives you can get as a reward for spinning the genie's wheel, which you access by finding the golden scarabs. Unfortunately, the only way to unlock Aladdin's badass machete is to go and play an entirely different game. But if you manage to grab all of the red gems as you go, you're handsomely rewarded with a screen that tells you you're a super player, which I already knew about myself, but sometimes it's nice to hear. When you get all of the gems, you get a completely different end sequence that finishes with Agrabah during the day. You even get a little golden scarab that flies across the screen that says, the end, cute. And if you don't get all the gems, there's an end screen featuring Agrabah at night. If you let that screen sit for a little while after the credits, you get a fireworks show. How thoughtful of them. All in all, there are worse ways to spend an hour of your day than playing through Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. And if you've got another hour to spare after that, you might as well go play the other one too. You can never have too much Aladdin in your life. Disney obviously agrees with you, considering that we're getting a live action movie this year. But this game has 100% less blue Will Smith than the movie is going to. While we re-completed Aladdin for the Super Nintendo, there were two deaths. Seven stages completed. 70 red gems collected. Three hours of total playtime. And countless hours spent humming songs from Aladdin after playing this game. Thanks a bunch, Alan Menken. Overall, Aladdin is a quick and fun completion experience. And if you have as much nostalgia and affection for it as I do, it's worth revisiting every once in a while. If faithfulness to the movie is what you're looking for, you won't necessarily find that here. But if you're in the mood for a fun Capcom platformer or for throwing apples at people, you can't go wrong with Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. So there you have it guys, our third time completing a game called Aladdin and we're still somehow not sick of it. Even the red gems are worth collecting given how little the game takes overall. And you know what, thank you again Dodger for being here to talk about this again, it's crazy. I know, I honestly didn't think that we would wind up playing the game this many times or doing a, a video on this game so many times, but I do have a soft spot in my heart for it. It's yeah. been very fun. I am a little concerned because I don't know where Ted is and I don't know where Clark is and I'm just hoping that they're okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Babysitting King. Yeah. I'll be right. I'll be uh -huh. right back. So with that in mind, guys, we still give this game our completionist rating of complete it. That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know about this episode somewhere on the internet. Clark is just all over the place right now. She yeah, she's not, got places to be. She's got places to be. If you guys want to check out Dodger and all her stuff, links in the description box down below. Buttons all over the place. And hey, go check her out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dexbonus. That's where she streams all the time. Yes, please. Yeah, when we actually stream this game there. What about you, Clark? Where are you out on socials? Can you, can you give it up? <laughs> she's not she's not quite there yet, but I one day. One day. One day. 